Welcome listeners to Furniture Industry News brought to you by FurniturePodcast.com. Kick off your day with the latest insights and trends in the furniture business, tailored for industry professionals like you. Whether you're a designer, manufacturer, retailer, or just passionate about furniture, we're here to provide you with the information you need to stay ahead of the curve. Stay tuned as we dive into today's top stories and explore how they impact our dynamic industry. In today's episode, we take you to the bustling hubs of trade and commerce that are foundational to the furniture industry's supply chain, the South Carolina ports. Amidst a thriving southeastern market, these ports are a testament to high productivity and steadfast service, playing a significant role in the expansion and prosperity of the industry in this region. The Port of Charleston, renowned for its efficiency, has been handling an ever-increasing volume of furniture imports with remarkable adeptness. The port's ability to move goods seamlessly is more than just logistics. It's about understanding the intricate dance of global trade and regional demand. Furniture businesses have come to rely on the SC ports for their capacity to manage the inflow of raw materials and outflow of finished goods without the hiccup of long wait times. Central to this productivity is the cutting-edge technology and infrastructure that South Carolina Ports Authority has invested in. State-of-the-art equipment and deep-water terminals enable quick turnaround for container ships, facilitating a supply chain that is as responsive as it is robust. Moreover, the SC ports provide a reliable service that underpins the furniture market's growth. From manufacturers who require timely delivery of components to retailers awaiting the latest inventory, everyone in the industry echelon is acutely aware of the ripple effect that a delay at the ports can cause. The SC ports aren't just a transit point. They are a vital artery of commerce, infusing the southeastern furniture market with a vibrancy that radiates through every showroom and onto every sales floor. The ports' increased capacity and unwavering reliability do not simply bolster the bottom line. They engender a level of confidence that business owners and customers alike have come to cherish. As we witness the maturation and expansion of furniture industry in the Southeast, we must applaud the SC ports for their pivotal role in this upward trajectory, a role characterized by exceptional productivity and reliable service that keeps the industry's wheels turning today and into the future. Turning our focus to the landscape of our industry in 2024, we are met with a panorama of both challenges and opportunities. A discussion with Amy, a renowned pinnacle winner and a master at merging fabric with frame, brings to light the critical role of design in an industry striving to balance the pursuit of competitive pricing while honoring the intrinsic value of craftsmanship. What stands out is the commendable strategy of brands like Target, which have mastered the art of respecting the consumer's taste at any price point, This acknowledgement sends a clear signal that, despite the lure of low prices, the appreciation for design integrity remains a guiding star in the expansive sky of the furniture industry. On the forefront of the hurdles we face is the economic outlook that spans both domestic and global contexts. Our journey from the COVID-19 pandemic leaves us navigating an uncertain terrain marked by persisting supply chain disruptions, the formidable challenge that is inflation, and a noticeable surge in container costs. The basic necessities of life, such as food and utilities, vie for the financial attentions of consumers, leading to a tendency to delay discretionary expenditures, such as furnishing upgrades, in favor of more pressing needs. The arrival of novel technologies, such as augmented reality and artificial intelligence, on the scene has been akin to a double-edged sword, While they pave the way for phenomenal efficiency and profitability for retailers who wield them with acumen, they also inadvertently carve out a divide between the technologically adept and their less advanced counterparts. In this new normal playing field, it is no longer a simple case of the large overshadowing the small. It is now the quick and adaptive who eclipse the complacent. Moreover, the transformation in shopping and buying habits, which began even before the pandemic, have turned consumers into elusive targets. Studies reveal a shift towards increased online shopping, a fading loyalty to established brands, and a migration towards economically priced goods in response to ongoing inflation. Yet, at the close of the day, the fundamental human needs for rest and relaxation persist. As Amy Archer wisely pointed out, underestimating the consumer's taste is a folly we must avoid. 
If we are to ensure that these consumers find their way to our stores, it is imperative that we strive to view our products through their eyes, adapting our perspective to match the evolving landscape of their expectations and needs. In news that warrants a round of applause from environmentally conscious industry professionals, High Point has introduced a game-changing styrofoam recycling program tailored for the furniture market events. Given the sheer volume of styrofoam waste generated during these bustling market periods, this initiative represents a bold step towards sustainability within our industry. The program, which is simple and accessible to all market exhibitors, revolves around the use of a densifier purchased by the city. This machinery chops styrofoam packaging and cups into small pellets, which are then melted and reshaped into ingots. These ingots aren't just left to clutter. Instead, they're shipped off to Canada and ingeniously repurposed into insulation material for tiny homes. This not only circumvents the logistical headache associated with the disposal of bulky waste, but also contributes to a green supply chain. To participate, exhibitors can collect their styrofoam packaging, specifically the type identified as polystyrene or plastic num 6, and set it out beside their regular waste on designated pickup days. The program, which started last October market, was met with fervor as tons of the material were kept from the clutches of our overburdened landfills. In preparation for the high point market this spring, pickups will become a daily operation, ensuring that the removal of this waste is as seamless as the processes within our showrooms. High Point's forward-thinking approach doesn't go unnoticed among showroom executives who are looking for effective ways to mitigate their environmental footprint. By transforming what would otherwise be a source of pollution into useful material, High Point is leading by example, showing that practical, eco-friendly solutions are not just possible, but ready to be implemented in the world of furniture. It's a movement of responsibility and innovation that promises to elevate our industry standards while keeping our planet in mind. In an intriguing turn of events for the furniture industry, the latest Furniture Insights report from Smith Leonard has revealed a complex picture as we close the year. For industry players keeping a pulse on market trends, these figures serve as a barometer of the sector's health. New orders for residential furniture have ticked up by 6% in December, marking the eighth consecutive month of year-over-year -year increases. It's a clear sign of demand resilience, with $1.97 billion in new orders overshadowing the $1.9 billion from December last year. Even more noteworthy, two-thirds of the participating companies reported an uptick in orders, Amidst the optimistic rush of new orders, a shadow falls on the figure of shipments, which declined by a significant 14% from December of the previous year. This dip is not an isolated incident. Shipments fell 17% for the whole calendar year, echoing the challenges embedded within our supply chain and market responses. The smith Leonard report pulls back the veil on these patterns, suggesting a crucial rebalancing act. While companies caught up on historically high backlogs from the previous year, the report unveiled that backlogs in December were down a striking 33% from December 2022. The month-over-month -month orders declined, leading to a 5% decrease in December backlogs from those in November. But it's not just orders and shipments feeling the impact. The wider metrics such as receivables and inventory levels align with these changes, underscoring the broader adjustments taking place across the industry. Receivables have slid in harmony with the dip in shipments, and inventories have contracted by 28% year over year, indicating that companies are realigning their operations to the current market conditions. The human element hasn't been left unscathed, with the number of factory and warehouse employees marking a 7% decrement from the previous December. It points to an industry attempting to right-size its workforce while still staying open to bringing in new talent. This report may give mixed signals, but it's essential for professionals in the furniture industry to dive deep into these numbers. They reflect not just the ebb and flow of our sector, but also the strategic repositioning necessitated by an evolving economic landscape. As we traverse into the new year, this recalibration could very well set the tone for the market's trajectory in the months ahead. In a captivating turn of events, Spring Air International, a distinguished figure in bedding manufacturing, transformed what could have been a standard promotional event into an ingenious marketing ploy that has the industry talking. Spearheaded by President Nick Bates, Spring Air dispatched a staggering 6,000 invitations to U.S. retailers, each armed with the allure of winning cash, floor samples, 
or perhaps the crown jewel, a Tesla automobile. The strategy? To bring retailers through the doors of Spring Air's showroom during the winter Las Vegas market. The catch was simple yet effective. Every ticket was essentially a golden ticket, but the recipient had to present it in the showroom to redeem the prize, mirroring the promotional tactics often employed by retailers to enhance customer footfall. The outcomes? Nothing short of extraordinary. Showroom visits nearly doubled, with a significant quarter being first-timers, keen to discover if fortune favored them that day. While the Tesla remained unclaimed, the palpable buzz and participation surely drove home Spring Air's primary goal, to embolden dealers with the concept of running analogous promotions to escalate traffic into their own stores. Spring Air also endeavored to impart a broader message, one that underscores the vitality of innovative campaigns in retail. They suggested that successful promotions need not hinge on extravagant giveaways like a car. They could be as elementary but effective as mailing a potential win for a home makeover. The undercurrent of the message was pellucid. Engagement and excitement can be cultivated with the right bait. This approach not only exemplifies out-of-the-box thinking, but also heralds a new wave of promotional strategies that could sweep the retail landscape, where the right blend of creativity and astute marketing can draw in customers and possibly turn the tide in favor of brick-and-mortar establishments. For Spring Air, this promotion wasn't just a successful tactic. It was a beacon to the industry, illuminating the path towards a more innovative and engagement-driven future. As we continue to explore the transformations within the furniture retail landscape, let's turn our attention to a trend that marries the old with the new, repurposing former Sears stores for modern-day furniture retailing. This narrative is not only a testament to the adaptability of businesses, but also to the evolution of consumer demand and the creative ways retailers are responding. In Farmington, Maine, a heartening story unfolds as Jake Dunton breathes new life into a space that's been in his family for three generations. Dunton, a former Sears licensee, has opened Jake's home furniture and appliance in the iconic space previously occupied by Sears. This move is especially meaningful considering the family legacy and the history tied to the location. The new retailer is not only preserving a piece of the past, but is also innovatively responding to current market needs. Not far behind, in North Franklin Township, Pennsylvania, the site of a former Sears showroom is set to become the new home of a speedy furniture showroom. The space, adjacent to a Crown Jeep dealership, is filling with new excitement as partners Devin Reed, Regis Nairn, and a third silent partner ready their 9,000-square-foot retail haven. Reed shares a poignant connection with the location, recalling memories of shopping at Sears with his father. There's a palpable sense of nostalgia, as the space's rich history mingles with anticipations of a fresh future in the Crown Center Mall. These narratives are not just isolated incidents, but rather part of a larger movement where savvy entrepreneurs see opportunity in repurposing spaces— it's a noteworthy trend in the furniture industry, one that marries sentimental value with strategic business growth. As these former retail giant spaces transform, we watch with interest to see how they contribute to the longevity and adaptability of the furniture retail industry, demonstrating that even in times of change, there's value in every square foot of retail history. TJX Companies, known for their portfolio of off-price retail brands, has been making headlines with a significant uptick in home sales, which are projected to constitute a third of total sales this year, reaching a formidable sum north of $18 billion. This growth trajectory propels the home category into a primary driver for the company's revenue stream. Exploring the reasons behind this surge yields a multifaceted view. At the forefront is the buzz surrounding home goods, a TJX brand which has emerged as a social media darling. Viral TikTok clips and talk show features have fostered a cult-like following for the brand, with consumers flocking to stores not merely for necessity, but for the thrill of the find, resulting in increased store footfall and consequently sales. Moreover, what began as a tentative step into the year quickly gained momentum. Home at Marmax in the U.S., for instance, registered a mid-single-digit comp, while home goods experienced a remarkable return to positive comps, signaling a decisive consumer attitude shift in the sector. Interestingly, TJX's appeal isn't limited by demographic boundaries. The company has seen an increased share of younger consumers walking through its doors, specifically those in the 18 to 34 age cohort, highlighting the brand's relevance to a burgeoning market segment. 
Enhanced vendor access also plays a vital role in TJX's growth story. As traditional brick and mortar closures continue, an influx of vendors has turned towards TJX's off-price channels, enabling an infusion of higher quality brands and goods to their inventory blend. The company's expansion isn't merely digital or demographic, but likewise physical, with plans to add numerous home goods and home scent stores across the U.S. This strategic move banks on the unique shopping experience TJX offers, an eclectic mix of fashion and basic home assortments that deviates from the competition, thus broadening its reach and consumer base. In summary, TJX Company's ascent in home sales is an intricate tapestry woven from digital engagement, demographic appeal, vendor partnerships, and strategic expansion. This narrative isn't just telling of TJX's success, but also serves as a broader indicator for the furniture retail industry, suggesting a possible shift towards value-driven, dynamic retail experiences that resonate with today's consumer. Thank you for tuning in to Furniture Industry News. Keep updated with us for more essential insights that help you lead in the furniture business. Until next time.